Mark Byington is already making an impact for the Commodores. Buckle up. We're going to tell you why. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Today, we're going to discuss more of Mark Byington, why he will succeed in the portal. Uh, Terrence Edwards from his former team and Malik Dia are two uh, recent portal targets that will make a difference as well as Van Allen Lubin if he can get him uh, back out of the portal or get him from getting into the portal and make in, and hopefully convince him to stay at Vanderbilt. That would be good. Also, with another practice down, the tight ends are emerging, and Cole Spence is poised to make an impact this fall. Um, he's finally healthy, and, and there's some, there's some uh, good things in store for him and the rest of the position as we go. So thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This show is brought to you by, well, here we go. All right. So Mark Byington is going to be successful, and it's going to be because he is hitting the portal early, and he looks like he's already on the verge of landing to Big name prospects, uh, some guys that have had some success uh, in their current stops. One of them is uh, Terrence Edwards from his from his old team, James Madison, and the other is Malik Malik Dia from Belmont. And I really, really like these players. Um, I'll start with uh, I'll start with Mister Sunbelt Player of the Year, uh, Terrence Edwards. What? I mean, what can you say about him, you know, that I just, you know, he's awesome. And he's some about player of the year, obviously. Uh, he was their leading scorer. Uh, he's in the portal. He made the, He's going to declare for the NBA as well. Uh, not sure where he's going to get drafted. I'm predicting he's going to end up playing one more season at Vanderbilt before he ultimately goes back into the NBA draft. But he was the leading scorer. Um, he appeared in 36 games. He averaged 17.2 points, four rebounds, three assists, and uh, he was 34.3% shooting from uh, shooting from three point land. Um, he is uh, six. Uh, he was Sun Belt Man of the Year, Sixth Man of the Year last season. He was uh, Sun Belt Player of the Year. Uh, this year, so quite the improvement there for the six foot six wing. Um, he's from Atlanta, actually. So go Georgia, yeah. Um, so he is. Uh, he was an integral part in in uh, the Dukes, not Duke, but the the Dukes, uh, leading them to their tournament bid and ultimately their their first round win over uh, Wisconsin. So he is. Uh, he's he's a guy that to me will make an immediate impact because of a he's going to have that kind of Diego Pavia effect where he comes in and he immediately knows the style of play and he can immediately give credibility to Mark Byington. And what that does is, is it gets everybody to kind of say, okay, well, you know, if this guy in this system can go uh, and win, go from six man of the year to conference player of the year um, in this scheme, there's points to be had. There's production to be made, and they can really make a difference in the SEC next year. I'm talking about Vanderbilt, if in fact Terrence Edwards does sign on with uh, with Coach Byington, which I, you know, honestly, I I think with all of this, all of the success that them two have had together, he's he's had some other schools contact him, and there's some other great programs in the mix for him. But honestly, like, do we really think? Do we really think he's going? Um, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I think he's. I think he's gonna. You know, he's he's gonna go with uh, Mark Mark Byington here, and and uh, it really, it really, really, really gives this will give this offense a boost. Uh, he is. Uh, Again, just somebody that can absolutely 
absolutely pour it in. And he's somebody that I think will take charge. He's a leader. And I think, I think somebody that will make an immediate difference uh, if they can land him in the transfer portal. So look out for that. That's going to, that's going to transpire very, very soon because he's going to want to, uh, he's going to want to get, you know, he's going to want to get to uh, his destination uh, quickly so that he can kind of end this and, and just kind of get going and working out. But, you know, honestly, I, th- I think it's going to be uh, something that happens uh, with Vanderbilt. So be on the lookout for that. Um, you know, Billy Derrick is on it. You know, there's a lot of, you know, you know what they say, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? So, you know, I, I have to I have to think that um, – that will be the case here uh, for uh, for Terrence Edwards. So, very very good player, very solid player, uh, great player actually, not solid. He's <laughs> he's a great player, and he he's electric. He can, you know, he he moves, he swarms, he's tough, he's physical, he can shoot right, and he can do a lot of different things for you. But mo- most importantly, is he can take the ball, push it down the court, and let's go. It's positionless basketball after all, so like doesn't matter. He's just a guy that can create, and if you can create, you're good, and that's what they need. Um, the other guy that I think is uh, is poised to maybe stay at home in Nashville, I think, is Belmont transfer Malik Dia. Uh, he is actually a product of Innsworth High School. Um, he is now at Belmont, um, but uh, he is uh, he's looking for a new school as well. Um, I mean, his list is pretty pretty impressive uh yukon indiana usc texas kansas state florida old miss arkansas virginia Villanova, south carolina wisconsin boston college arizona wake forest yada 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 and i think vanderbilt's going to be in on him too so um this is this is somebody that i think if you can convince him to stay home he's somebody that could really really make a difference um i i think with all these impressive schools out there um He's somebody that uh, could uh, could wind up back at Vanderbilt, and he is, uh, you know, he could he could make a return trip because he did transfer away. But again, that was uh, you know that was a Jerry Stackhouse thing. Um, but uh, you know, with with new leadership, maybe he is. Maybe he's there. I don't know. Um, but he did win Newcomer of the Year uh, for the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, he is uh, he leads the Bruins in scoring 17.8 points per game. That's for, He's tied for first in rebounds. He's a 6'9", uh, forward type, big body, can get to the rim. Um, he's probably more, honestly, he's probably more of a long shot, um, if I'm being honest. Um, I... I uh, I don't think he's somebody that is a slam dunk, pun intended. Uh, you know, or at least as much as, uh, or at least as much as uh, Terrence Edwards is. So uh, that'll be uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see how this how this all shakes out. But the fact that he's been with uh, the fact that he's been with Vanderbilt before, um, I think, is something to uh, something to note. So. Um, He's following Coach Byington on uh, on social media. I think this would be a good fit. It's probably more of a I think this would be a really good fit versus like I, I don't think there's any sort of concrete evidence that he is you know being contacted. He is being recruited, or or he does have a chance of going back to Vandy. I don't I don't know. If there's anything concrete with that. I just think it's somebody that he's in the portal. He can make a difference in this offense. He can run. And uh, and he can he can score and he can do everything that Coach Byington needs to do. I just think that somebody that that needs to be looked at maybe maybe a reunion's in order. Maybe he needs to stay and be a Nashville le- legend, right? Um, and his uh, his teammate freshman Kate Tyson is also somebody that's in the portal um, coming from Belmont. I think he's somebody that could uh, that could also uh, be somebody that. Uh, that can play at the next level, maybe at Vanderbilt. I don't know. So uh, those are those are a couple names that I've seen. Um, but the reason, you know, there's a reason why they 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 enter the portal. There's a reason why uh, Vanderbilt is now all of a sudden become a an attractive location. It's it, there's a reason why Malik Dia could 
entertained coming back, even though he has a bunch of other offers on the table. Probably he has a bunch of other destinations. Uh, I, I think it would, I think it would suit him well to try to look for a reunion at uh, at Vanderbilt, unless there's some other things at play that caused him to leave that are beyond basketball. Uh, there is, uh, I, I don't think there's any reason why Byington shouldn't reach out to him and say, "Okay, hey, you're a, you're an athletic, dynamic forward that can that can run the floor and, and create. Um, why not give this thing a shot again?" So you know, that's somebody that um, would be interesting in looking at. I think Terrence Edwards. I think if he doesn't get drafted, he's coming to to Vanderbilt. So I, I think he's he's kind of more of a. I would consider Terrence Edwards more of a lock. So. Um, but like the reasons why, and we talked about him as goals, and we talked about what whichever new come whichever incoming coach, this was conversation at the time, whoever ended up getting this job needs to do these things. Well, hitting the portal is one of them, and it looks like he's already doing that. He's reaching out to people. But um, the other one is bringing back Memorial Magic, getting the fans back involved, getting the getting the fans jacked up, and. Uh, implementing it, implementing an identity, which I think these two things are going to go hand in hand, but we'll talk about that next. All right. Everything is better together. That's right. Please, 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 please. Better together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. Better together offers similar and familiar experience for existing daily fantasy sports players with a social twist. You can play with a friend slash teammate. It provides a sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports. Makes you realize this is also makes you realize that DFS that's daily fantasy sports is fun alone, but like a lot of things, it's better when you're doing it with friends. So it shows synergy from working together, uh, it gives you a better chance at winning than going at it alone. The team, the team, the team. It's all about the team. So uh, is your bracket already busted? Well, are you tired of the same da- daily old fantasy grind? Well, there, well, where you make a roster, cross your fingers, hope for the best, or you losing on the last leg of a pick em entry, or you know, whatever the case may be. We're going to introduce better together. Again, as I said, it's the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Um, I've played more of the DFS things. It can be it can be kind of boring when you're playing by yourself. You, you know, you're talking to your friends about it, but they don't really care. But if they're invested in it with you, uh, I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, so I, uh, you know, again, it's uh, Vandy got Vandy fans, you know, sh- to show the best players by participating in the fan challenge series with a chance to win real money prizes. All right. So ask Vanderbilt fans, um, mention your better together username and ask your friends for friend requests. Encourage, uh, encourage everyone in this uh, in this base or even around the SEC to uh, to join the challenge series. So uh, see the app contest for details. So what you need to do is download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over a thousand dollars in cash prizes. Remember the code Locked On. Because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Absolutely. It's always better together. All right. Up next, we are presented by Amazon Fire TV. And that's right. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's the opening weekend for baseball or or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. You don't want to miss out. So Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from all your favorite sports brands 
all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and, and most of the big pro leagues in college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. It's right there, in case you're wondering. It's right there. Yeah. Click it. All right. Welcome back to segment number two. It's the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen. Uh, did you know that the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show is now available on Locked On College Basketball Podcast? Yeah. If you did, well, you would know that Andy Patton and Isaac Shade are experts and will break down their brackets and discuss everything that you need to know to fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's NCAA tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And they're talking about Sweet 16. It's all good. So I uh, talked about, you know, we discussed what needed to happen, okay? So all throughout this coaching search, you know, we, we, we kind of, you know, I, I talked about what went wrong with Jerry Stackhouse, not to, like, disparage Jerry Stackhouse and to live in the past and all that stuff and everybody, you know, it's all irrelevant, but it was more meant to, like, set goals. That was kind of the point of the whole thing. Now, one of those goals, obviously, was you need to hit the portal and hit the portal hard because NIL is going to be a big part of what you do and what resources that you have in order to build a roster. Looks like Byington is already doing that. Terrence Edwards has entered the portal. It is almost a foregone conclusion that he's – I'd be surprised uh, – let's just say I'd be surprised if he didn't end up at Vandy. And if he didn't end up at Vandy, it's probably because he got drafted and decided to go to the NBA, which is possible. Uh, I think that's the only other scenario that he doesn't end up in a Vanderbilt uniform is that he's going to be in the National Basketball Association. So – um, but from what I'm hearing, from what I'm reading, and, and the, the impression that I get, and following the lead of baseball and football, they're going to – NIL is a thing now at Vanderbilt, which that's not always been the case. They haven't always been willing to participate. But it looks like Vandy now is willing to say, let's go. Let's, let's get this thing rolling because we need to have – NIL. And so with that, you know, you get uh you're gonna get a you're gonna get uh, higher caliber players for one. Uh you're gonna get uh it's it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing what 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 can happen with uh with some NIL stuff and, and you're you're gonna be very, very excited about what uh this is gonna bring. Uh I think Vin Al Lubin is somebody uh that I didn't mention in the first segment that really should be uh, pursued. I, I think having a worthy big man uh, is, is very important in this offense. Uh, for goal number one is to you know build your roster um, through the portal, through recruiting, all that good stuff. I think having an athletic big man, having the right big man, which I think I think Lubin, Alan Lubin didn't he didn't fit Jerry Stackhouse's scheme because he's not that type of big man. He's not like the guy at Purdue who. <laughs> Camps out down in the paint, can can back you down, dunk while standing flat footed, and he's just a big Goliath behemoth that can run a little bit. Like that guy, Purdue is a freak, by the way. Um, but then Alan Lubin is somebody that he's ath- he's an athletic big guy. He can get rebounds, but it, it's got to be more of like an aggressive tempo type scheme it's got to be something that allows him to do what he does well which is run he moves he he's athletic he can sh- he can create he can get to the rim you don't do that in stackhouse's offense i don't know what you do in stackhouse's offense to be honest with you um that's not really the point so um other goals are that you know the atmosphere that i think is being created 
I think will will bring back memorial magic a little bit too. I, I, I think creating that that home that advantageous home atmosphere, bringing that back, resurrecting that will be awesome uh, for for recruiting efforts because what's going to happen is you're going to see it's going to come through not only on TV but like these high school recruits they're going to come in for visits and that place is going to be rocking dude and when that place is rocking I, I mean it's such a unique environment it's such a unique venue that like it's special in its own right and with that is a thing called memorial magic and when you get that going it's it's tough and you know hopefully football can with these renovations can do the same in their venue which hasn't which hasn't been the case uh, since i've been living in nashville um baseball is its own monster they're just good uh that just shows you the good product's going to give you a good advantageous home crowd and baseball is really um uh, not a not overly a fan centric um or where fans can make a huge impact but basketball is one that fans can make the most impact in, right? Go ask anybody that plays at Cameron Indoor. Do the fans make a difference there? Yeah, I would say so. Um, go ask somebody that plays in the Dean Dome. Do those fans make a difference? I'd say yeah. Go ask somebody that plays in the Carrier Dome. You know, the fans play the fans make a difference, but also the atmosphere. It's a giant dome that your all your depth perception stuff is thrown off. Like it's an environment. All right. Uh, go ask uh, Jerome Tang at Kansas State, the Octagon of Doom or something like that, I think is what they call it. It's an environment, right? You look at some of these unique gyms, uh, Oklahoma State, they have, you know, and, and their football stadium too as well. Um, they put the fans right on top of you. Um, and it's, it's like nothing like special with the design or like the fans don't have like some special name or special traditions that make them tough. They just show up. And make noise, and they're they're loud, and their venue's pretty cool. It's kind of like Vandy. Vandy's venue's pretty good. When they're when Vandy's good at basketball, it's a tough place to play. And so, um, with that being said, you have to understand that and buy into that. In order to create a good environment, you have to have a good product. And to have a good product, you got to recruit, and you got to have NIL, and you got to spend money, and you got to upgrades, and which upgrades are coming. So, um, it's it's exciting. It's an exciting time, and. Um, you know, positionless basketball, you put an exciting brand of basketball out on the floor and it just, it just makes for, for better, for a better product. So, um, but we're going to switch gears to football. Tight ends are going to make a huge impact. Let's talk about it. Yeah. They're going to make a huge impact. I'm excited about it. You should be too. All right. Nissan. That's Nissan, Nissan, Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any and all of the 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels can only be described as an armada. This one seed is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they secured a spot in the Sweet 16 this Thursday against Alabama in the NCAA Tournament. They're the favorite pick by many to make a run for the championship, including me. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch, and they've, re they've really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprises all with a powerful performance in the first two games of the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have them set up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life and go Rogue. Well, that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Passion, drive, experience. It's all what keeps your ride or die alive. And this will also brings home the winning trophy. Patience as well. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, 
you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, welcome back. Segment number three, Locked on Vandy. We're going to get out of here in just a few minutes, but before I do, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't throw a little bit of football in here. Uh, Spring practice is uh, raging on. Nobody would know about it. Why? Because basketball made made their new hire uh, with Mark Byington, so congratulations on that. Um, And it's exactly what Clark Lee probably wants. No attention whatsoever. And that's okay, because I'm here to give it to you. All right? And I'm I'm just about as positive of a person as you can get. So uh, this is good. But I so when looking at this offense, right, one of the things that we talked about as a staple of this offense is having a great tight end. Okay. Anytime you run a a run oriented offense that requires a lot of RPOs, reads, things like that, blocks on the edge, things, you know, you need a good tight end. Not only to be an inline blocker, not only to be somebody that blocks on the edge for the quarterback, but somebody that's involved in the passing game as well. Because when you're running play actions, when you're running uh, quick screens and bootlegs and things like that, you have to have an athletic tight end that's also a huge tar- target for the quarterback. And, you know, I think there's three guys here. Um, and with the way the receivers are, are looking, you could you could do a lot of twelve personnel. You could do a, you could maybe even uh, experiment with a little bit of thirteen personnel after you watch the George Bulldogs films, right? Especially if you're in a run heavy uh, mood. Uh, so Tyler Fortenberry is the newcomer. Uh, Cameron Johnson and uh, Cole Spence are the existing guys. Cole Spence uh, coming off of a, a, a major injury. He's been cleared. Uh, he made a really, really good play, uh, a high point at a ball uh, in practice. Uh, there was some video evidence of that. He's looking spry. Uh, he's looking like somebody that, uh, you know, can can provide a, a spark for this offense can, uh, and provide kind of like a safety net uh, for whoever the quarterback is um, that ends up starting game one. But I think, what, I think the tight ends being good – makes a massive difference in this offense because before, like if you have question marks at tight end, you know, those guys are in a position to where they could like tight ends is just overall, just a position where it's either feast or famine, just in general, right? You you either like really, really good, like your Brock Bowers level, or you're just remarkably average and you don't get a whole lot of production out of them. And they're just kind of there taking up space so like when you like 11 personnel kind of is a waste of time so um i don't foresee that being a problem with vanderbilt i think vanderbilt is going to get really good tight end play um i think uh um, eventually tyler fortenberry will kind of rise to the top a little bit because he is uh He's probably the most athletic guy that they have. I think Cole Spence is, is somebody that's really good. He's a six seven target, so you can't really miss him uh, too much. I mean, he's a behemoth. And then uh, and then and Cameron Johnson, I, I think, is somebody that um, is also poised to to make a difference. It, and these guys, you're gonna you're gonna kind of figure out as you watch them just kind of what they do. Uh, it, it's still relatively unknown what. Tim Beck's going to do with these guys uh, as far as like involving in the passing game, how much are they going to be in pass protection? What are they going to be like in the RPO game? Stuff like that. Like it's, it's, it's still kind of like up in the air because I think he's just trying to figure out what he has because it, like, that's one of the challenges as an offensive coordinator. Uh, when I was an offensive coordinator, it's kind of what I went through. Do I have a, do I have a viable tight end that, and, and what can he do? Well, you know, is he a better blocker than he is a pass catcher? Like what kind of person do I have? Do I have twelve personnel where I can have one guy in protection, one guy better suited in routes? Like, can I put them both in routes? Could I like split one guy out, which you probably could uh, with with Fortenberry? Um, but th- there's a lot of different options that you have, and uh, with the big bodies that we have, and and the lack of shyness and blocking, um, I think that alone 
will make this tight end group well worth it. And I, I think you'll see kind of a different different style offense uh, coming out of Vanderbilt, different from what you're used to, both stylistically and production wise as well. So, and the tight ends are going to be a big part of that. And uh, how that's to be determined, uh, but uh, it will be exciting nonetheless. And they, you, you'll be like, okay. These guys are good. And my prediction is Tyler Fortenberry by the end of the season is going to be the guy. But Cole Spence, you know, don't sleep on him, obviously. And I think you're going to see a lot more 12 personnel because of kind of how the you have young wide receivers and some unproven guys as well. So um, look for that uh, coming down the stretch. But uh, that's something uh, I'm going to make a mental note now when I have uh, when I have Kurt Page back on. Uh, I told you he was going to be a fairly regular um, he's coming back, uh, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how they're going to use the tight ends and what he thinks about that, and uh, plus a lot more. Uh, we'll have him on probably later on in the week, hopefully, and uh, we'll get this thing rolling, man. But uh, that's going to do it for us here uh, on a on a midweek hump day episode of the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Van on the Locked On Vandy podcast network on the Locked On podcast network. So uh, that's going to do it for us. Hope you have a great rest of your great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. As always, anchor down.